Today I want to bring the case why Sony has to make a vintage E-mount camera based on the older Minolta camera design. I made a couple of uh, designs using AI and I think they look gorgeous. I will show them to you soon. But before that, please take two seconds time to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button to not miss any of the upcoming rumors. As you know, I work in the camera rumor business since 2008 and I have connection to many stores in Asia, Europe and the US and I can tell you that vintage camera designs are on the rise. Cameras like the Nikon ZF, the ZFC and Fuji cameras are selling like hotcakes. Map Camera Japan just shared what were the most sold cameras of 2023 and the Nikon ZF was on third place and I know from other stores that the Nikon ZF is really on high demand. Moreover Canon's thinking about doing a vintage camera too and I do think Sony should not miss the train and it's time that after 10 years of having the same kind of e-mount camera design they tried to do something new. As you know, Sony didn't change the basic design of the E7 full frame cameras in the past 10 years. The E7 and the E7R were announced in October 2013. And now over 10 years after, the basic design of the E7 cameras are still the same. You can see a comparison between the original E7 and the E7R5 here. Of course, the cameras did become bigger. The grip is now bigger, but the basic blueprint is the same. And even the E7C cameras that are supposed to be a different kind of design are actually just an A7 camera without the EVF bump, as you can see from that image, where you can see the A7R5 and the A7C, they have the same basic design language. At this point, many of you are probably thinking that design doesn't matter as much as the tech inside the camera. I disagree. I think that design matters just as much as the tech inside a camera because a camera is something that you wear on you you bring along with you all the time like the shoes the clothes and a bag that you carry and you surely care about the design of the stuff you wear on you so um, that's at least what happens with most of the people if a uh, design wouldn't matter suv wouldn't sell for example when it comes to cars because they are big uh, expensive and have the same space inside as a station wagon for example but nevertheless those cars are selling more than the more reasonable smaller more compact and more affordable cars and sony actually has some nice heritage they can tap into to create some beautiful vintage cameras because as you know sony bought minolta many years ago so they can actually use the original design of some of the nice beautiful Minolta film cameras like for example the Minolta SR2 or the Minolta SRT101, there is also the Minolta XT11, the Minolta X700, the Minolta XE and many other cameras that look very beautiful and they could start from that to design a new Sony Iman camera that has that kind of vintage look. But what should be the main characteristic and benefit of a new Sony vintage E-mount camera. I believe there are mainly two. The first one, of course, is the design. The design should be timeless, should be a design that you look in 10 years from now and you still think that it's wow, it's nice to, to keep it and to keep the camera, to shoot with it and take it around. And I do believe there's a value in that. The second benefit would be to focus the usability of the camera on the very basic photography. So having mechanical dedicated dials for the ISO, for the shutter speed, for the aperture, without having to necessarily rely on the menu and digital controls, but giving us the possibility to have quick access, mechanical access to the basic functions of photography. And there is a value in that for me, because I'm used to use the Mamiya 7, also the Leica MP, so I know what kind of settings I need for my kind of photography, and I don't need most of the time more than those three settings to create the kind of photography I want. And a vintage camera that is built around that kind of usability has a very big value for me and I think for many photographers out there. Now to show you how such a camera could look, I did use some of the old Minolta camera designs and I modified them using AI and I created six kind of different Sony vintage cameras that I want to show you now and you can tell me which one you like most or which one should be the base for another for a new Sony vintage camera. So let's walk through those six images. 
This is the first image I created. As you can see, it has the three dials that are important for me, which means aperture, ISO and shutter dial. And also the shutter button is very prominent on top of the grip. I think this would be a very classic, nice looking design. The second design shows a silver camera with a leatherette body and also rounded edges. On this third example, I have a very rectangular kind of body with a very edgy grip. The fourth design is actually something different. I wanted to see how a vintage camera looks in 10 years from now. And you can see the image here. And it proves my previous argument that vintage cameras have a kind of timeless look that always look nice even if the camera wears off in time. I think this is a kind of Sony camera you would always love to carry with you even in 10 or 20 years from now if the digital sensor still works because digital stuff breaks but I would love to have that kind of vintage look. The fifth design shows a more titanium finish camera, something that also Fuji did in the past. So it's not something new, but I wanted to show you something different than only black or silver. And now we come to the last design, which is my favorite design, the one that I created and I think speaks more to me. This again has the three dials I need for the shutter, the ISO, the aperture, and also a very prominent shutter button. And I think the design here looks very complete so the grip is very well integrated into the body and it also looks great with a kind of very old style Minolta lens or whatever you want to attach on this camera. So now let me know what you think about this design which one you like most and um, if you agree with me that Sony should do a vintage camera then like this video a lot so that uh, Sony sees it because I know Sony is following me. We know we have a bit of um, influence on Sony, like for example, in the recent firmware rant where we for over one year asked Sony to improve their firmware strategy and they indeed reacted and now will, for example, release major firmware updates for the A1 and the A7S III in March. And I hope that if we keep talking about our need of, for example, vintage cameras, then maybe they will realize that they should move into that direction. That's my hope, that's why I'm doing this video and I will keep talking about the future vintage camera from Canon and Nikon and Fuji and their sales to prove my point that Sony has to tap into that market because it's a market that it's that it is growing particularly among young people and they don't have to miss the opportunity to win over young customers because young customers, if you win them over to a Sony vintage camera, you can of course sell uh, many more lenses in the future, many more cameras and so forth. So my point is clear, we need a Sony E-mount vintage camera and uh, as far as rumors go, I didn't get any indication that Sony is working on it. So it will definitely not come this year, not probably not even 2025, but if we put some pressure on Sony, then I think they will realize they have to do this. If you liked the video, please like it. Also subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any of the upcoming rumors, because there will be some real nice rumors coming soon about the next Sony cameras. See you soon, folks.